and welcome back. Now, on the workbench today, apart from, yes, the ubiquitous flashing LED, hooray! Yes, we have a bare bones Arduino. There is a reason for that. And, of course, a DS3231, because I had a query from Harry. There it is. Um, I'll paraphrase, but basically what he asked was, can I run my Arduino and have it wake up from deep sleep, you know, every 24 hours or some random time? And I said, you can make it wake up at most every eight seconds, which, you know, it sounds a bit silly, doesn't it, really? But that's what everybody does. You set the watchdog timer. JLC PCB offers custom PCBs with fast, reliable delivery. But today I want to talk about their SMT and PCB assembly from just $2. Let's have a look what that consists of, shall we? So as you can see here, the PCB and SMT assembly is available from $2. How do they do that? So normally there's a $7 setup fee, but in this case they're going to give you a voucher so you don't have to spend that money. Great. All you do is pay for your components. Simple. PCB SMT assembly from $2 from JLC PCB. Why don't you try them out now? And I said, you can make it wake up at most every eight seconds, which, you know, it sounds a bit silly, doesn't it, really? But that's what everybody does. You set the watchdog timer. Eight seconds later... Um, the watchdog timer expires and goes into the interrupt. You go, whoa, stop, don't reset me, please, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And then you reset it again. And you go, should I be awake at this time? Oh no, only eight seconds have passed, not 24 hours. So you go back to sleep and you do this 10,800 times in a 24 hour period. And finally you go, oh yes, I should be awake. I'll go and take a, a humidity reading or count the bees in the beehive or whatever it is your particular project is doing. So Harry was saying, can I do it another way, please, rather than waking up every eight seconds, basically? And I said, no, you and the world wishes, you know, you can, you know, there's an, oh. well, actually you can, yes. And it's very easy to do because Harry's question was one of those things that just played on my mind. I go, of course you can do it. There's the DS3231. It has an alarm on it after all. In fact, it has not just one, it has two alarms on it. So, I mean, for goodness sake, surely we should better do something and we can. Um, before we dive into it then, let me just give you a little demo of what it's doing. Um, I need to bring over the uh, call term window, if I can find it on over here. Here we are, call term window. There it is. But the other, that's the time that this is um, reading every second, right? In fact, it's reading it um, all the time. And it just says, if a second has passed, if the second value has changed, go and display it on screen. So that's what it's doing. Now, if I press this little button here... We're going to send the Arduino to sleep. Oh, no. That was, sorry. <laughs> I've got two buttons on this breadboard. That was the reset button. Okay, we'll try this one over here, shall we? This is the uh, going to sleep button. Right. Good night, it says. And it's asleep. And uh, it set the alarm, though, on the DS3231 and go, in 10 seconds time, wake up, please. Or at least set that pin low. Oh, there we are. Look, it's awake. Hooray. Well, I hope you didn't miss that. And that's how easy it is. And obviously for the demo purposes, I'm only doing it every 10 seconds. Oh, I wish I'd put that button somewhere else. Every 10 seconds, right? Uh, but you could, of course, do it for a day in the future, a week, a month, an hour. It doesn't matter. The point is you've got an alarm there. The difference between the two alarms on the DS3231, alarm one, alarm two, only alarm one allows the seconds unit. All right, so you can have out days, weeks, months, hours, minutes seconds which is how i'm doing it i'm just adding 10 seconds on and if it overflows into the next minute you know increment and so on uh, alarm two does not have seconds so you can do hour and minute but not seconds which would normally be enough wouldn't it but you've got two alarms there so you can set two different times if you wanted to so what's happening on here is that the arduino goes to sleep and current consumption is is low but not super low we'll come on to that in a minute the actual Arduino, as we know, takes about, well, best case is 0.2 microamps, but, you know, that's a that's a, a workbench type value, isn't it? In the real world, when you've got a whole project with various things all attached, unless you do something else, you're never going to get 0.2 microamps. So we'll just have a look at the current consumption on here and where the current is being taken, basically. So um, let me connect up my multimeter. There's nice room for it over there. We can just see what's happening. Okay, multimeter's connected up. It's all a bit precarious at the moment. But um, when it's running then, like this, flashing that LED, um, it takes, as you can see there, about 13 milliamps. So if I um, make it go to sleep, 
1.74 hmm well we know just from experience because you've probably seen my other videos on deep sleep um, 1.74 is not what the Arduino takes if you've if you've turned off everything so you're in deep sleep there's nothing running the only thing that will wake it up is an interrupt we know that the the actual 80 mega 328p is much much lower than that so where's that current going to it must surely then be the DS3231 except the data sheet there says 100 microamps is what it will take 200 when it's active by active it means that the um, I squared C uh, bus is active so that's these this yellow and orange cable here so when you've got data running up and down there and it's awake that's when it will take about 200 when there's nothing on it it drops to about 100 microamps it says these are all of course data sheet values it's the best you can ever possibly hope for aspiring a bit like the 0 to 60 you know in a car hmm well let's send it to sleep again and take off the power and that will drop it down to the well next to nothing won't it let's have a look got to hold the board send it to sleep there it is whip out the old red power supply 0.15 that's 150 microamps now hmm now you can see that the uh, look at the uh, debug window there it says I'm awake but it's not doing anything because the DS3231 is obviously not working therefore the I squared C the wire interface is not up and running yet so I have to plug that in to make it run there we are but it still wasn't as good as I'd hoped 150 microamps so where is the power being taken well to cut a long story short I'll tell you it's the I squared C bus basically the um, this chip has also got an EEPROM on here and I suspect it's got some pull-up resistors on here well it has in fact if you look at the uh, little schematic for this particular module so you've got pull-up resistors they're taking current um, so that 150 without even the DS3231 being powered by VCC only it's it's backup battery which is on the back here just in case you didn't know there's a well there's a blob of blue tack and a battery on the back there um, so that's what's taking the power but then again 150 microamps well you know is is that all right well in fact is 1.74 milliamps okay if you're powering this from a lipo how long is that going to last well we can do a calculation in a bit and find out uh, and of course you could put um let's assume you had an 18650 uh battery so three point well roughly 3.7 volts it goes from 4.2 down to 3.4 at which point it's sort of more or less deadish isn't it and if you've got one with protection on it it will shut off at three volts to protect it um the capacity of such an 18650 battery is probably in the region of um, 2000 milliamp hours unless of course you buy them from the far east in which case they're probably 5000 or 8000 milliamp hours yeah i know yeah they just put any old thing on their packaging but 2000 from a decent supplier like say samsung uh, their batteries are probably about 2000 you can buy them higher if you're going to pay a bit more um you know two and a half thousand milliamp hour hours but then again if you put two in parallel you're immediately doubling anyway it's probably a cheap way of doing it actually so let's have a look um, at a couple of things then first of all let's have a look at the um well the battery calculations why not right i found umpteen battery life calculators on the internet as you might expect but um, this one here from digikey i think i'd trust probably more than most so i've just plugged in a, a capacity here of 2000 ish right um, and we're saying we're taking 1.5 milliamps on average and that comes out at uh, 1333 hours which divided by 24 is about about 55 days then isn't it but of course that's without your your project actually doing anything if you are waking up every um, well even every day firing up perhaps wi-fi or something like that or bluetooth or logging depending on how much current you use at that time of course those 55 days is going to drop down but uh, it could be a month say yeah 30 days i think you could you could expect to get 30 days with this sort of um battery consumption which is i don't know if that's good or not that's for you to decide but once a month and the good thing is of course that if you had to come along and replace your main power supply on here that my multimeter leads are now insisting on dragging over if you were to replace the main power here once a month with a brand new freshly charged lipo or lithium ion then of course at least your 
DS3231 with its battery and blue tech backup supply uh, wouldn't lose the time at all as you saw when we disconnected the the uh, positive supply from here it didn't lose that time uh, to set it can be quite awkward I'll talk to you about that at the end of the video so I reckon that's probably okay ish isn't it let me um, take out these multimeter probes it's not really the way to measure current isn't it uh, and we'll put this back in here there we are right and we're up and running again great so uh, multimeter aside put that back in the middle now let's have a look at um, some other more interesting stuff then that um, will show you how this is actually set up now i did you know cheat because on this occasion i did use a library for that ds3231 i just i did look at all the register stuff that you can update and stuff and it's it's fairly straightforward but i thought look somebody's invented the wheel why we're not here to write a library for the ds3231 we're here so that old harry can get his arduino fired up once a day without having to use uh, the watchdog timer so let's concentrate on that so that's exactly what i'm doing so i think in this case we're going to first of all look at the code okay code time um i'll just let that uh, debug window keep running in there to distract you away from my rather rubbish code this time but okay let's whiz through it then um forget this bit at the top that's just the particular ide that i'm using i'm using the eclipse ide slurber version so that it automatically creates this for me and useful it is too well, so Arduino.h, you wouldn't want to put that in if you're using the Arduino IDE because it already does it behind the scenes. But what you do need is AVR slash sleep.h, so you can go to sleep. Uh, wire, because we're using twin wire, I squared C in other words. And this is the library, DS3231.h. Now, warning, big warning. Yeah, very big warning. There are dozens of libraries out there, all called DS3231 slap forehead time why is it that developers cannot put something unique after the ds3231 their initials are due or something because now we've got i've got on this machine four libraries all called 3231 ds3231 and you think we'll just rename them well you can't because the class behind it is called the ds3231 i'll be editing things left right and center and of course should it be updated at any time you then overwrite all those changes so I'm going to put the version I'm using up on the GitHub as a sort of a snapshot. He may update it in the future, so I'll put a link to where his real GitHub is, which I'll show you in a sec as well. But um, this is the version I'm using. Now, there are dozens out there, some of which do not allow you to set alarms. They're, they're too superficial. They let you read the date and temperature and stuff. Yeah, woohoo. Um, but they don't let you set alarms or don't give you the, the facilities to set the alarms or read the alarm so this one does and i thought as libraries go this is as as good as any so that's the one i'm using um right okay so we've got three pins here the sleep pin that's the one i'm clicking the button when i get the right button that is the wake pin now the wake pin that's on an interrupt on the arduino now i'm not going to go through all about sleeps and interrupt there's a whole video i did on this they are that one there look that video explains deep sleep in an arduino and how to wake it up and everything basically your arduino powers down entirely and the only thing that will wake it up is when pin either two or three goes low they are the two pins you've got as an external interrupt and we're not using two we're using three here because for some reason i'm using pin two as the led flashy flashy pin i don't know why i chose that one normally i wouldn't uh, and then we have some ds3231 variables that i just basically stole from the uh, the library examples here right so i've just pasted those in and the struct as well what's that a struct okay what's a struct very very useful when you're passing data backwards and forwards either between your module and somebody else's module or two modules basically or two wireless sets you know an nrf 24l01 or in this case between a class and your program you need to put stuff somewhere and it's just a collection of bytes, but organized nicely so you understand what it is. If I expand this out, you'll see, there it is, look, this struct TS, which probably stands for time something, um, look, contains uint8 underscore t, that's a type of uint8, which means it's an 8-bit integer, so it can only take up to 255, but as you all know, date and times don't go up to 255, so it's just one character. So, and that's what it all contains in that order. 
and there's a little if statement here to say if we're doing it for Unix time. Let's not even go there. Unix time is second since 1917. It's used in Linux all over the place. I use it in my ESP32. Um, no, it's not an ESP32. It's an ESP8266 Home Alone system. But let's just move on from that. Pretend, it, pretend it's not there. So this struct, which we're defining here, contains all these values. So when you say to the DS3231, go and get me the time, please. The DS3231 gives the values back via the use of this library, the class, and stuffs them into that struct for you then to take out as we've called it, well, he's called it variable t. Not the best name, is it really? I hate these single names. I should have called it clock. But anyway, t dot and then any one of these names. So sec, min, hour, month, day, month, year. And it's very easy to understand what each one of those does. Right, that's that's the mini version of a struct. Uh, so in my setup, what do we do here? I think we just set up a few variables. Oh yes, inputs, by the way, should be input pull up unless you know you can uh, keep it low. So I've said it's an input pull up. Uh, and yeah, that's the flashing LED. Here we start I squared C on the wire, twin wire. We send a value down to the DS32 one via this library to say, Oi, I'm about to start, so get your act together. And here, very importantly, we clear any existing alarm. Because if we've set an alarm in the past for, you know, an hour ago, it brings that int pin. It's often marked on the hardware, incidentally, as um, SQW, square wave, because it's a dual purpose pin. You can either generate a square wave on it or use it as this active low interrupt pin. And it will keep it low, well, forever, really. I guess until you take the power off and it forgets what it had done. So we have to clear the alarm there. And we do that same in the loop, actually. So in, we come into the loop. And basically, what the loop's going is going, look, M is the, the, the go to sleep button been pressed, the one that I fumbled with at the beginning of the video. Have you pressed it? If not, we skip all this code, come all the way down here and go, go and get me the time. See, as I said, you just say, go and get me the time into that variable called t. That's just the address of t. And then I compare what was the previous second that I did anything with and the current second. And if they've changed, in other words, they've gone up, I just print the time. Simple as that. And update the old value of uh, seconds with the new value of the second. So every second, as you can see there on the debug window above my head, every second I'll get an output. Great. But what happens if you do press Yes, I want to go to sleep. Well, all this code, apart from here, where I set the next alarm, all this other code here is from my other video, which I describe at the top here, uh, video 115. So you want to know about sleep modes in the Arduino, that's the video to watch. And it was a whole video's worth, so I'm not going to go through it here. Okay, I do recommend, though, uh, if you want to know about it, watch that. So what we do then, so all this from all this code here, sets the sleep all the way down to here where it says good night allows interrupts and goes to sleep at this point here this is the command that actually makes your arduino go stops the clock and it just sits there inert 0 0.2 microamps if you're lucky you know consumption let's face it even if you had a one microamp i mean does it really matter in the scheme of things probably not but anyway the thing is it sleeps at that point it does nothing nothing is working no clocks are running, nothing. And then the interrupt goes low because the DS3231 has said, oh, the alarm timer has, has appeared. I'll bring that pin low, which the Arduino hardware recognizes independently of the fact that it's gone to sleep and leaps into this routine here, sleep ISR, because that's the one I told it to go and run when you get a low on that pin. And the first thing we do is disable the sleep so it doesn't go back to sleep accidentally. And we say, and do not do any more interrupts on that pin. Ignore that pin from now on, which is pin three in our case. We go, that's it, done, finished. Do not look at that pin anymore. And the reason for that is, of course, the pin is kept low by the DS3231, so it constantly be firing off this interrupt. So by detaching it at this point, it goes, okay, I'll just ignore what's on that pin from now on. This is exactly what we want because we'll we'll attach it again when we're good and ready and not before. Then, so what it does here at the end of this, it goes, right, now what was the next statement after my sleep statement? Because that's where I'm going to continue running from. So if we just come up here, this is where we got put to sleep. Your 
your Arduino, having run that interrupt, will then come onto here and go, I'm awake. That's the very next sentence after that one. And all the variable values are maintained. So you can just carry on running. It's, it's a much better system than the ESP8266. When that goes to sleep, it literally switches off and you lose all your variables. What you're supposed to do with the ESP8266 is store your variables in the real-time clock, which is built in, EEPROM, which is built in. So you go, right, these values are important. I'll stuff them into the real-time clock EEPROM, go to sleep. And when the real-time clock wakes up in the ESP8266, it's like it's woken up brand new fresh, except there's a little marker that says, Oi, I woke you up. The real-time clock woke you up. It wasn't like new powers just implied. I have woke you up. So the ESP8266 via your code and then go, Ah, so I've been woken up from deep sleep. I can go and grab the variables from the real-time clock EEPROM, put them into my variables and carry on. But that's a different story. And I'm pretty sure I did a video on that. But anyway, let's let's not get too sidetracked. Too many rabbit holes. And anyway, then it carries on down here. And the first thing it does here is clear the alarm. So that interrupt pin on the DS3231 will go high again. And everything is as it was. And then the, the code just continues to run. So the set next alarm, which is what we do right at the top of this loop when the interrupt's been triggered to go to sleep, set next alarm. It's a little bit, I don't know, cumbersome, I think, but it works. So this is where he describes in that library how to set the alarm. Now you can do with the alarm. You can just say, just look at the seconds. I'm not interested in that hours and minutes. If the seconds says 22, that's the alarm and it will just trigger. But more normally, you might say, if the minutes is, you know, five minutes and 22 seconds, then trigger the alarm. Or uh, three hours, five minutes and 22 seconds. So you can build it up. So I guess Harry, in this case, might want to say, it's a whole day in the future. So as long as whatever today is plus one and the same time, it will trigger every single day at that time. And the DS3231 is very accurate to within a few seconds a year. There's even a way to tweak it as it gets a little bit old, the DS3231. There's a resistor in it that you can tweak programmatically just to keep it on track. But let's, let's not go there yet. I don't think many people do that. So here we say, what is it we're looking at? Um, on this particular example, we're saying, yes, I do want to look at seconds. Yes, I do want to look at minutes. And yes, I do want to look at hours, even though we're not. Uh, and I don't want to look at these last two, which is days and day of week. We don't care about those. But you, you might, of course. And then we say, well, go and get the current time, put them into these variables here, add 10 seconds on to the seconds. And this is, this is the clumsy bit, in my view. If the seconds overflows more than 60 basically add one to the minute work out what the second should be if the minutes now overflowed into the next hour sort out the minutes and increment the hour and what i haven't done of course because this should go on and on if the hour overflows beyond 24 or beyond 23 actually so it goes to 24 or higher then you should increment the day and so I d come on this is a demo i'm sure you can work out how to do that so having done all that we go right this is the value now we want to set the alarm at. So this is how we set the alarm, but it's not yet active, not yet active. We've just set the values for the alarm, which has got to be a future time, I guess. I've never tried it actually with a past value. Would it go off? I don't think it would. I th I'm pretty sure that if you were to set the alarm for an hour ago and then said in this statement here, let's turn that alarm on. I don't think it'd ever go off because it's the past, isn't it? It's never going to match. But in our case, we're putting 10 seconds in advance and we're going to switch the alarm on. And then it carries on with its with its loop. So just for the sheer hell of it, let's let's make it go to sleep again. There we are. Good night. And uh, in 10 seconds time, which whizzes by when you're testing stuff like this, believe me, it will spring into life. The DS32 want to go bang. That pin has gone low. There it is. And everything starts again. Cool, yeah? I mean, you can spend hours playing about with this, tweaking it just the way you want. And this this library that we're looking at here, the way to set the alarm, it's, it's OK, actually. I don't mind that. So let's have a look where I got the library from. And then we have a look where um, I got the hardware from. Well, I bought my hardware about 10 years ago, but... You know, it's still there. Let's have a look. OK, this is the library that I'm using. It's by Rodan. Uh, Petra Rodan. Who, Kluge. It says Kluge there. That's in um, Romania, isn't it? Yes, it is. Everybody's nodding. OK, so he's written this DS3231. 
Uh, pity he didn't put PR on the back of that name, so everybody knew it was his and not some other DS3231 library, but that's just a little niggle that's gone through my mind. Because, I mean, I did look at this one here, which is also called DS3231. Uh, uh, so now I've got various ones on my system, but this is the one we've used, and it's, it's, it's pretty good. So I'm going to put that in my GitHub as a snapshot, but I also will put this address here at the top. Um, it's always better to go to this actual GitHub because he might make some tweaks or amendments. We might find an error or something. Who knows? OK, right. Um, we've done the battery life calculator. Yes. Now, talking about battery life, then, if we're saying an 18650 has got a battery life of about 2000 milliamp hours, maybe. Um, I did look at this site here. And it says, what is the best battery then for the 18650? And it goes through various ones, the safest, the best seller, the best value and all that. So I'll put that out there just for your enjoyment and perusement to read over a cup of coffee, because some of them are quite higher. Let's have a look at the best capacity. See this one here, look, this Sony is 2600, which can make quite a difference to a project's lifetime, couldn't it, on that one battery? Well, I'm gonna leave you to look at all those. I'll just put a link in there, it's quite useful, isn't it? Now, where did I get my DS3231 from? Well, actually, I probably didn't get it from Banggood at the time, because I bought about 10 of these about 10 years ago, probably 15 years ago, actually, and they haven't changed one jot since. Yeah, value for money, isn't it, for the manufacturer, that's for sure. So this is it. Now, they're not $4.83 each, you get three for that, and I would say, in my humble opinion, because we're now paying postage, you, me, and everybody's paying postage of $2.05, it seems poor value to buy one for about $2 and then spend the same on postage. It's better to get three, because you always need spares. Three for just under $5 and then spend the $2 postage, in my humble opinion. You might find these, but well, you will find them definitely on eBay. You might find them locally um, for well, this is, you won't get them for the same price as this, I don't think. But then you might think, you know, $4 or $5 for one locally, get it immediately, is a better deal for you. So that's entirely up to you. What have I missed off? What haven't I told you? That's always the thing about these videos. It's not what I've, have I said, it's what haven't I said. Um, can Harry... Now, Harry has suddenly turned into this this sort of fuzzy picture of newbies on my channel who think, I don't really understand all this. Um, okay, this this clock module is communicating via the orange and yellow wires, which is known as I squared C, which is just a geeky way of actually I I C. It should be really I I C, but geeks love to change this. So you've got two I's, so we go I squared C. I oh, know it's just uh, so we all call it I squared C now. Have done for donkey's years. And it's just a serial interface into whatever it is you're communicating with. It's not particularly fast. It either runs at 100 kilohertz or 400 kilohertz. 400 kilohertz being fast mode. There is a much faster mode, over a megahertz, on some processors, but not many peripherals like this would support it. So 400 is about as fast as you can get. So it's not a particularly fast protocol, but it is pretty reliable. You can't go massive distances with it I'd say a meter and you're probably pushing it because the longer you go with these serial signals the more corrupt they get and they start instead of being a nice square wave they start becoming you know, a bit slanting and down and, yeah so that's I squared C it's very easy on the Arduino we refer to it as uh, a wire Arduino themselves recognize far too late that they should not have called it wire they should have called it twin wire because it's two wires, not just wire, but having done it, they go, wow, too late now. There we are. They could have had a, a synonym, I think. Though. Anyway, so that's I squared C. Um, so this device is battery backed with a CR2032 battery, which you can see under all this blue tack. There it is, 2032. Fairly standard, and they're 10 a penny. But once again, if you've got a battery backup like this, what have I got in there? Oh, yeah, I've got a cheapy uni cell because I bought a bunch of those cheap ones because I leave them in here and of course they die eventually don't they but I would say if you're going to put a battery back up in something like that use something like um, Duracell or Energizer or one of the better brands that is going to last for well in a system like this probably two three years I would imagine so this board is an Arduino by another name that's the chip 
as used in an Arduino. It's the dip version though, not the um, surface mount version. I'm just looking around to see if I've got one. Look, here's here's the Arduino with that same chip in it. Yeah. So this is the same as that, except this hasn't got any of the sort of power input, the USB, which goes through that little um, chip there. Um, it hasn't got a crystal. See that crystal there that runs this? Actually, that crystal won't run this. I think that crystal is for that one. Uh, that crystal, which runs this at 16 megahertz, this is not running at 16 megahertz. This is running at 8 megahertz internally on its own little oscillator, which isn't that accurate to be quite honest but it's, it's accurate enough for this demo but if this was then communicating with something else over a serial wire um, they could get, you'd have to use pretty low speeds as i say the i squared c serial protocol is pretty low speed anyway so that works just fine and uh, yeah that's about it really everything else on that chip is pretty much the same as this all the headers and the outputs and what have you um, yeah so that's it watch that video that i mentioned about um deep sleep if you're interested in that um and it talks about interrupt wake ups i think there might be a couple of videos actually so i'll put as many links as i i think are suitable and uh, to leave it we're going to put it into sleep again because that's what i oh no i'll press the setup button again well start the video end the video the same way whatever right sleep Hooray, good night. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Do give it a thumbs up if you think it was interesting. And see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.